Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Motherhood Unlocked, the space where we dive deep into the heart of motherhood and marriage, sharing wisdom, laughter, and the kind of real talk that empowers us to embrace our journey with grace and strength. I'm Chelsea Skaggs, and today we're tackling a topic that touches the lives of many new moms out there. I know that this was huge for me. The feeling that our partners might not be stepping up to the plate as we hoped or expected in this wild time of parenthood. I know this is a sensitive subject, but it's one that's crucial for us to explore together. So let's get into it. Let's start by acknowledging something important that many of us enter parenthood with expectations. Expectations about what it will be like, how we'll feel, and importantly, how our partners will journey alongside us. Here's a truth that might not be easy to hear, but we need to start with this. Sometimes reality does not meet those expectations. Additionally, I find that many people have these internalized expectations that they don't discuss with one another. They just feel like things will fall into place, but then they're surprised when things fall differently than what they imagined. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had a picture in your head of how things were going to go, and then your partner did not play their role the way that you had expected? This can leave us disappointed, resentful, frustrated, wondering if there is hope, like, can things be the way that we want them to be? If I could go back to my pregnant and postpartum self, I'm going to go back like seven years and tell her something. I would love to tell her to be more vocal and more clear about her expectations instead of assuming that they were always known by my partner, assuming that I knew my partner's expectations and then letting things go on autopilot in ways I did not love. A lot of the pain that I feel like I experienced as a new mom was by letting things just go on autopilot, not intentionally, not discussed, not with clear shared values and expectations with my partner. And that's not because we weren't good parents. It's not because we weren't good partners to one another. It's literally because we had no idea that our relationship and our parenting journey would require that level of intentionality. You don't see that in media. You don't hear a lot of talk, people talk about preparing your communication and your mental load and the expectations of who's doing what and showing up where. It doesn't seem like that's something that needs prepared, and yet it often does. <laughs> it pretty much always does or things are just going to fall into an autopilot pattern that most of the time leaves us feeling less than satisfied. Research suggests that even the most egalitarian couples often find themselves falling into more traditional roles once a baby arrives. If you're a listener of mine, then you probably know that I'm a big believer in not just falling into these traditional roles and letting things go that way and seeing a relationship where usually mom is just the, the way it is. Usually mom is taking on a lot more of the caretaking and feeling overwhelmed and burnt out and not having the energy and the resources and the brain space to continue to pour into her own aspirations and her goals and her ways of of giving back to the world in these ways. And we often find that men have more of that capacity. And so if we're feeling frustrated, if you're like me and you're frustrated with, um, and I'm speaking from Western America, with the way that we tend to have more male voices and more male leadership that's being amplified and highlighted, we have to stop and think about what is happening in our homes and what is the accepted norm, okay? This discrepancy isn't just about physical tasks, right? It's the mental load. It's the invisible labor that mothers are often carrying, again, leaving them with less capacity and brain space and resources for their leadership and their skills. Like women are so amazing and we need them in these other spaces. We've discussed the mental and logistical load on other episodes, so I won't belabor that here, but it does play a part in this topic of expectations and change. 
So we want to understand why this happens. And again, we've talked about this. A lot of us are familiar with some of these concepts, but partly it's due to societal norms and cultural expectations that view uh, that shape our view on parenthood, right? It's what have you been seeing? What have you heard? What was ingrained in you from a time that you were a young child and could start to imagine yourself as a mother or a father or a parent or a partner? Where did this start to come from? And then also it can be related to, again, these unspoken and different expectations that you and your partner hold, which can come from your own conditioning, your own upbringing, your view of career and home goals, and how you've developed your communication and teamwork patterns over the years. There are things that can be changed. And in order to work towards change, We have to understand why we arrived where we are and not judge that, not choose black and white, right and wrong, this and that, but to understand how did we get to the place where our worldview is what it is? How did our partner arrive at that place? And what do we want to take from that and keep? And what do we want to discard because it's not serving us? You guys know that I'm such a huge believer in the power of communication. And so of course, in this episode, we want to make sure we're also talking a little bit about communication. So I want to share some effective communication strategies because I truly believe communication is one of the most powerful tools we have. It's not just about talking. It's about connecting. It's about listening. It's about understanding and finding common ground. So as you're listening, here are some of my tips that you've probably heard before, but I want to say them again to help you initiate the crucial conversations that can make or break your experience together. First of all, choose the right moment. Impactful conversations aren't the ones to have in the heat of frustration. We want to find a calm, quiet time. And I get that that's relative. There might not ever be a calm and quiet time in your house. So the bar might need to be lowered a little bit, but we're finding a time that feels appropriate to express feelings and needs and really develop this teamwork. Um, This is not you seething at 5.05 because your partner said that they were going to be home by five. And then when they walk in the door, you're coming at them with your frustrations. Also, you know, this is important for your partner to know. This is not like when the kids are at grandma's for the afternoon and you finally get into the bathtub to take a nice hot bath and they come in and they want to talk about some of these important conversations, but you are finally taking time to like soak up your own experience and have some time to yourself. So, so figure out right moments. What are good moments to have conversations? You know, feel that out. You're not always going to make the right choice. It's not always going to be perfect, but try to ask yourself, is this a good time? to bring up this conversation? Like, does this make sense right now? Uh, The second tip for you is to choose those I statements. You guys hear me talk about this when we say you always, you never, because of you, then we put our partners immediately into a defensive state and not a lot of good conversation comes out of defensiveness. And so if you're feeling that like accusatory kind of energy, it doesn't mean that you're wrong or you're not justified. But starting a conversation with that is probably not going to end well. So how can you frame your thoughts around your feelings and experiences? For example, I feel overwhelmed when I'm managing the baby's needs alone. I could really use more support. Here are some ways that you can support me. Or here are some ways, you know, again, I don't even like that, like how you can support me because it makes it feel like you're the one in charge of the baby, and then your partner is stepping in as like a helper. Um, So I would actually reframe that. I'm challenging myself here. (laughs) Here are, you know, I could really use more teamwork. I could really use um, us both owning parts of this. I could really use more collaboration. Like, let's think about that language we're having here. The key to having this type of conversation is that you have to understand your needs and desires yourself enough to communicate them to another person. This is where I'm often helping my clients to unpack the overwhelm in their mind. I call this brain dumping. Like you've got all these feelings and sometimes they come out in these little spurts, but they are maybe not clear. They're maybe not the way you want to present them. 
So when you're able to unpack the overwhelm, kind of brain dump, organize your thoughts and get clear, then you can clearly communicate from the place of I statements. And then the third tip reminder for you here is to listen actively. I know that you have spent time figuring out what you want to say to your partner. And that oftentimes, because parenting is so demanding, you don't have the chance to get your thought out as quickly or at the time that you want to. Um, So listening can feel difficult, but the same is probably true for your partner. The more that you can work on communication as a two-way street, the more you're going to feel like a team. Listen to your partner's perspective with the same openness you want for your own thoughts. If you want to deepen your partnership, then a deeper understanding of them is necessary. And that comes from listening with openness and curiosity. So the key question here, can you change your partner? Short answer is no, not directly. But you can inspire change through your actions, through communication, and the environment you create together. So this is about making safe spaces for growth not forcing it. Most people do not like to be told what to do or do not like to be forced to do something differently than the way that they have found themselves doing it in the way that's probably comfort comfortable for them. So when we are looking for change, when we are looking for growth, we are thinking about how to make an environment where it's safe. So if you're asking your partner to step in at baby mealtime, but then you know, they they take the spoon and they move it a different way than you would. And you're like, no, it's not like that. It's like this. They're not going to feel safe to step into new spaces. They're going to say, okay, fine, you just do it. Like if you you know how to do it, you do it your way, you just do it. So ask yourself, are we creating, are you creating a space and welcoming a space where there is room for growth and exploration and mistakes? Okay, we have to make it safe to make mistakes. One thing I like to remind specifically my my moms when I'm working with a couple or when I'm working with a mom is that you typically, okay, this is not true in all situations, but typically mom's going to have a longer break from work. Um, Maybe sometimes she's leaving work. Maybe sometimes the male partner's leaving work. But in those early days, it's often mom who is getting into these new habits and learning how to care for a baby. And she, you, she, we are going to make mistakes oftentimes without an audience. Um, And yes, that's lonely. And so it's not, I'm not to glorify that, but you are making mistakes too without an audience. And so then if your partner comes home and you're asking them to step in, but then you are pointing out every mistake and they feel like they are just under the microscope, it's not motivating. It feels shitty, honestly, to feel like you are asked to step into a space, but then you are constantly scrutinized over it. So ask yourself if you've ever been in a position like that. Maybe it was with um, an athletic team. Maybe it was with your own parents. Maybe it was at the workplace. But if you're asked to develop new skills and grow, but you don't have an environment where it's safe to learn your way and to kind of fumble a little bit, then that doesn't feel good. I remember when I felt like I was the only person in my home who could see the little things that needed done repeatedly to take care of baby. For me as a new mom, it wasn't so much the direct things like changing the diaper, but the behind the scene things like restocking the baby changing area, packing extras in the diaper bag, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure that I wasn't perfect. And I probably attacked my partner a few times out of my stress before I found some better methods, which I'm going to share with you. Our teamwork got a lot better when I did a couple of things. One, I started vocalizing the things I was doing behind the scenes so it didn't appear that it was just magically happening. Okay, so if we want our partners to be able to recognize things, but then we're just constantly doing them behind the scenes and not bringing them into the equation or the conversation, then their brain isn't naturally going to be like, let me try to think harder about this and figure out all the pieces that are happening that I'm not seeing. Okay. So it's vocal. I started vocalizing some of those things and not in like a, oh, look what I'm doing now. Like I'm not asking you to bring that tone and that energy to the relationship, but just to say like, 
oh, I noticed that this is out. So somebody needs to refill this. I noticed that this is out. Somebody needs to refill this. Making these things seen instead of being the magic person who is behind the scenes making everything happen. And here's another example of how this played out for us. I let my husband leave the house once without me refilling the diaper bag. Yes, that led to him being without a change of clothes and enough diapers out with baby. But no one, no one was in harm. It was uncomfortable perhaps, but there were no like massive safety issues. This also forced, or I should say invited him to see the behind the scenes part. Okay. Again, no one suffered terribly, but it caused enough discomfort that he naturally recognized the need to check the diaper bag before leaving next time, instead of assuming that I was going to always take care of it. Because before that I was always taking care of it. So he didn't need to think about it. This empowered him to take on the responsibility and role. And even though it included a tough afternoon, it let him know that I was letting go. I was letting go of the grips of control and empowering him to step in more. The kicker here is that I didn't berate him when he came home and the baby's clothes were messy. I just let him know that there were things that I was doing behind the scenes that I couldn't continue to be fully responsible for and I needed him to be aware of. So here are some action steps I want you to take away from today's conversation um, as we think about bringing change to our relationship. And again, it's not so much like, can I change my husband or can I make him the person I want him to be? It is how do we create the teamwork, the family culture, where we are both stepping in and getting closer and closer to the kind of partnership that we want. Number one, lead by example. This is something we've heard like literally our entire lives. Demonstrate the behaviors you would like to see. This might mean openly sharing tasks, expressing gratitude for each other's efforts, and being the change that you want to see in your home. Two, supporting growth. I've been talking about this, and I want to just say one more time. Encourage your partner to develop their parenting skills and confidence. Sometimes stepping back is the best support you can give, making space for mistakes. Your partner is likely insecure in many areas, just like you are. And if they don't feel safe to make mistakes, they aren't going to try new things. And then you stay stuck in patterns that aren't reaching your fullest potential. Just like you need to feel grace and safety to figure things out as a mom, your partner does too. And then embracing some mantras like, we're on the same team. We're doing this together. We want to root into the truth that you are both learning and both growing. You could even go above and beyond here and share with your partner when you're trying something and it doesn't go perfectly, okay? Another tip for this is to be mindful of the examples that are in your life. What kind of couples are you surrounding yourselves with? What kind of media are you taking in? What kind of norms are getting planted in your brains based on the examples you see? This is a great time to do kind of a friendship audit. And I'm not saying that you kick to the curb all of your friends who have shitty husbands. I mean, those friends still need you in their lives, especially if they have shitty husbands. But those might not be the people that you try to spend a lot of family time together. Those might not be the people that you want your partner and your kids to see the modeling of partnership. Like, how can you seek out people who have similar values as you do and try to surround your yourself and your family more with those kinds of things? Um, talk about the why. Why something that isn't working isn't working for you. So when you want change, it's not always motivating to just say, this needs to change. But take the time to, again, know for yourself and be able to communicate and then share why. And ask the same from your partner. Are you asking for feedback around your own opportunities for growth and being open to seeing where they may want to see you invest in some change or growth? At the heart of our discussion here really is the desire for a partnership that feels balanced, supportive, and connected. 
This doesn't happen overnight, but it is certainly possible. I have seen this growth tremendously in my own marriage. I have seen this in the couples that I work with. Like when we hone in on making a safe space for growth, having clear and consistent communication, um, understanding the, the deeper values and whys behind things that we're trying to change, then we're able to grow together and not apart. So I know there's a lot more we could go into here, but I'm going to, I'm going to stop us at this time. Um, I know this is like, we're exploring a delicate, but deeply important topic here. Your strength, your resilience, your capacity for love are what make you the incredible mother you are. And I hope that today's discussion brings you a step closer to the kind of support and partnership that you long for and you deserve. I would love to hear your thoughts, experiences, aha moments, or even your own strategies for navigating partnership in parenthood. So please share them with our community over at in, on Instagram or Facebook at Postpartum Together. I have a Facebook group called Motherhood and Marriage. Um, you can find me there. You can leave some notes here on the podcast or on the YouTube video, but I want to keep the conversation going and maybe we'll even do a part two of this one because there's a lot more we could dig into. But until next time, um, live with grace, embrace your journey, lead with love, you know, all those things, but also know that this shit is hard and nobody's doing it perfectly. And it is truly a transformational journey that you are on. And so when we embrace this as a time to grow and expand and honestly, like find ourselves in a way that we never have before, I think that's the sweet spot. And that's what I want for you.